How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. We still need to refrigerate this corpse, and unfortunately, talking to Kuno might be our only option now, which is real bad, real bad. Um, but we've got no choice, really. Here we go. You missed it at show before. A kid came by, completely fucked a tree to pieces. He fucked the tree up. Fucked it good. It was porno. If you want to shut it down, you need to act decisively. It's Kuno. Use Kuno words. Total retards use language like that. Congratulations, Kuno. You made yourself a retard. That's probably the only way to work. Uh, stop choking, Kuno. The Figari's got you in a chokehold. Kuno's not fucking choking. He grabs his throat like he's choking. Alright, simmer down. I think we all learned our lesson. Oh no, let's not go with that. Chokes you out there. Serves you right for using reactionary shit. Like fuck you did. He lets go of his throat. Kuna's gonna keep saying kipped forever now. Kipped, kipped, kipped. He only gets two kips out before he coughs. Shit, he stops. The fuck do you want anyway? You got your fuck bag down? Now let's talk normal shit. I oh, know you want a normal conversation, huh? Yes, yes. Kuna wants a normal conversation. He even sounds a little plaintive now. Ask normal shit, please. Kuno, I need a fridge to stash the body. For the fuck, Gimp? Good thing you asked the Kunmeister. He nods, trying to look older. Kuno knows a fridge, perfect for freezing. I thought you would, where is it? Baker Man's in a rush, but what's in it for the Kuno? He crosses his arms. What's the return on Kuno's investment? Then fuck it up, you need a fridge. Rhetoric? Convince the Kuno to spill the beans? 83%, that's good. By killing in his territory, someone has openly challenged Kuno. It's in his best interest to put them in their place. Some arrogant shit thinks he can kill in the Kuno's kingdom without asking the Kuno first. Sounds like lawlessness to me. A dark flame smoulders in Kuno's eyes as he ponders your argument. Wordless. Like kings do. This outlaw's fate is in your hands. Let's make an example of him. Help me locate him using the fridge body technology. Alright, Kuno hears you. See that shit house over there? He points to the collapsed building of the bookstore. A cold comes over you as you glance behind him at the crumbling colossus there, casting a shadow on you. Yeah, I see it, the big tall one behind you. You gotta get in that shit. He points again, in there deep. How do I get in the building again? Through the bookstore. You gotta beg the book, bitch. Used to be he'd get in there through the door doorbell. Jam and sh jam that shit. Book bitch changed that. Kuna doesn't beg, so Kuna doesn't go in there anymore. Beg the book, bitch. Yeah, book bitch, beg her. You stupid or something? It means the book still. We have to ask her. He checks his notes. Plaisance is the mother of the little girl peddling books on the plaza. We have to ask Plaisance in the store. See? The Clard gets it, he says with a nod. Listen to your four-eyed friend. What do you mean in there deep? Check the fucking basement, pig. Don't you know anything? The kid rolls his eyes. Anyway, check the fucking basement. Recon style. There's a giant fridge down there. Fucking gimbal fit, no problem. He nods confidently. Looks like a white bear or some shit. Try not to piss yourself when you see it. White bear? Polar bear? Thanks, Kuno. You didn't hear it from Kuno, pig. He looks at you seriously. But don't forget where you heard it from. Kuno owns you now, pig. You're Kuno's property. Alright, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Alright. That went surprisingly well. Jesus. That's the first time talking to Kuno has ever gone reasonably well. I don't know how talking to this lady's gonna go, though. I don't think she likes us after what we said about her daughter. You know about how we said she shouldn't use her like slave labor? Which I still agree with, but, uh, you know. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. I was told there's a huge fridge in the building's cellar. Can you leave me there? A fridge. She fidgets with her pendant. No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Are you interested in books? She nods at the bookshelves. For whatever reason, she's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. Shit. What's down here then? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the cur curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Why aren't you browsing the books? She fiddles with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? You ought to. 
She speaks almost like she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron, assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stare at you. From the look of this, traditional Seminese, it's a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. And who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fontome, the Seminese Islands down south. Aside from poking at it, suspiciously, there's nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Pull the curtains. You're just about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that, I told you, it's off limits to the customer. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be he held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? This is about that curse. That why you're afraid? No. It's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm, so I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go in there. I can't allow it. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. I've heard there's a fridge that I need. Everybody suddenly needs something from there. She waves her hands angrily. Leave the curtains be. It's what it wants. Okay, so what's in there? And So what's in there has a will and wants you to enter. This is bad. We have no choice. We have to go on. No, she raises her hands to try and stop you. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here. And let's talk through talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Let's see what she has to say. Lies. Rip them open, we say. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you as if taunting you. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Seminese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Sorry, dude. We need a fridge. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. <laughs> a vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. Here's the thing about that, about haircuts. A heavy door with missing handles stares be stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Seminese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What if we just break it down? Knock on the door. Only an echo, no one is there. A hollowed out dark echo. Maybe we should break it down, but not before strategizing. That's right, take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground for proper posture if you want to succeed. First, check your posture. Steady breathing, solid core, you've got this. With one shoulder forward, you're ready to smash the door like a battering ram. Check your surroundings. The room is dimly lit, and littered with old barbershop rubbish. But the path to the door is clear, and what about the door? It's made of solid block of wood, it has stood there for ages. The hinges are old and coated with carmine, a carmine layer of rust. Should be doable. 72%. Let it rip. That looked like it hurt. Didn't break. We succeeded though. You smashed into the wood and see a small crack appear on the doorframe. It's gonna take one more try to break through the other side, but you've done it. The lieutenant stares at you as you stand there, sullen and brooding. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? Smash into the door and shout, fuck the system. Freeze dirt bags. Hands up now. Fuck it hurts. Let's do that one. <laughs> Fuck it hurts. <laughs> Mr. Kitsuragi, can I help you? What is this place? 
lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. It's an adventure. No, it's a gym, he disagrees. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Okay, I'll do that shortly. Some speck of dust shimmers in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. Sounds good. Alright, let's rock. Sand is dripping from a punching bag? What is this? Shot put ball. The poster says CTS Fortis. The rest is worn off. Worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. 58. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? Should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPA safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. So no one's supposed to come here anymore. I'm not gonna hurt myself over it. I already hurt myself breaking the door. You know? I think we're good with hurting ourselves for a little bit. Take a break from hurting ourselves. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Looks like the remains of the 24 hour window repair shop. <laughs> What is with this place? It's so weird and huge. He said deep in, I guess. Strange liquid. Wild animals. Yuck. Airship rotors covered in spiderwebs. They remind you of blades. This place is pretty creepy, man. Money. A naked mannequin torso. Strange yellow color. Oh, there's more up, apparently. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing is faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins. Casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin, and even aether welkins hailing from vast emptiness of sidereal space. You should adopt one of these welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a welkin. Examine the welkin. One of the welkins towering among the rest appears to be different, however. Examine the welkin. It's a Varahamira, a high welkin. His face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldur, the Dwerg, the humans, and even the headless men. All of them purged. Imagine a world filled with only Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, the High Welkin to rule them all. Lieutenant can't help but comment. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Hmm, political commentary. That one has a great beard too. Kid nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Well, this has been educational. Photos. These photos collage... The photo collage depicts icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual light. You see permafrost and glacial landforms. Dead trees groaning under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in the storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rags, built into glaciers, by boreal dwarg. Yurts under the snow, great mammoth like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cosy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine. A much needed respite from our own world. A pinned coast card reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal. 
energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Schedule. There's a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily, Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid. The grand scheme of production and money. Looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Minimi stands for Mini Meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUM. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. What happened? As time went on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Lieutenant looks at the rigid ice field of nothingness and concludes, Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the production schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partially legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, Heat Death of the Universe is the New Black. Another note says, The biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Dude, there is so much here. What is this thing? What has been happening here? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and wire framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer, says the lieutenant, watching you circle around the machine. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. He sounded surprised and a bit cautious. We were looking for a fridge, and we pressed on time, so... On the other hand, it's not that I'm not interested in abandoned radio computers. Do you think I should turn it on? Maybe the body has stopped decomposing somehow. He looks over his shoulder. I don't know. You're in charge of this expedition, officer. Turn it on. The machine lights up, like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing virescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left tangled, disconnected. This is where the memory should go, the lieutenant notes, observing the machine. Press play. Press play again. Press print. Okay. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth button. Is this Emma's Atlier? How do we get to that? There's so much here. Should I heal or should I wait until I like rest? Because I get all my health back when I rest, right? So I should probably just wait until I rest. This rate we might make enough money though. Production schedule filament memory. Well that's for the thing. Slipstream logo. Hmm. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skies and rotor blades both bear the same slipstream logo. Seems like they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, which did they start with, and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. But a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Reality is ruthless. Um, so can we put the memory in the mainframe? Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static beep seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no, it was already glowing. And now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien seer-like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint Gieslane. This is East Islandian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What are you, a machine or alive? Yes, I'm alive. I'm 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now please repeat. Is this the production schedule? The lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. They're merely cautious, says the old lady. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password, repeater, at the East Insulidian Station. Okay, but where are you? 
How do you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian State Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you were. Fortress accident. As for me, well, some static. Then I'm sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island in the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses like stars in the dark. Now please tell me the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. Why'd you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name you're, the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalogue before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalogue says. It's not bad. So conceptual. Hmm, she hums. And what's that? The interactive call on radio play. The static drowns her response. Any other questions? You hear her when the connection finally improves. What's the production schedule? The filament you've inserted in the reader. You mean the glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. Um, the password. I'm real bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. This is the police. Please open this thing. The voice recites, I'm contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder, Fortress Accident. Without filling a warrant, filing a warrant with the Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we're not doing that, unless we wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? The voice in the machine asks again. She sounds cold in the damp air. I don't know the password. Received. I'll register this login attempt. It sounds bad. A login attempt. Something criminal would do. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Okay. Thank you and goodbye. What about this? We haven't looked at this yet. Or this. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in red and blue marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on an alaba on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Ken Kedron mosaic tiles. Very pizantic. Hold on. How do I know what Kendron mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History class. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarial blue tiles look beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies. It seems UKV1236, UKV1237, and UKV1239. Some written notes too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. Looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Must be an elaborate piece of art. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations. All lead back to one red heart titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, This one can listen in on any station at once. Looks like a surveillance program. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call the call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the station suggests people across six Isolas would be playing. Mundi, Insulnde, Katala, Grad, Samara, and even Ilmara. There's no way a basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. The lieutenant leans closer, his finger tracking the maddening rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker stained fingers clean. I know doom when I see it. This company was running out of funds. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used this fireplace in ages. Oh, wait, what's this one? Scribbled across the notebook. Developers are the most RPG, advanced RPG in the universe. Okay. What do you think is going on? With that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace. Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. No, that's not it. I think the Lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. You mean like we're doing right now, on an actual computer? 
and this was a role-playing game. Indeed, those welkins are a dead giveaway. Points to the chalkboard. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the rural board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool someone should give them millions of real real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Koenigstein, you know, places with industry. Not in Revishal, west among the ruins. I don't think anyone has attempted to create an intersolicillary game before. They still have the technology. How are they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. He knows at the fireplace. None of the players have been have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master Frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think they were supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He looks a little hooked. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but the lieutenant tilts his head thinking. Do you have any money? Let's give them more money so they can finish it and make it even bigger. The world is cold and lonely. This would... This would keep it company. Let's finish it. A half smile breaks out on his face. It's too late for that, I'm afraid, he says. Looking around the derelict room, the pipes howl and rat crosses the floor. Okay, he concludes. Let's keep moving. Oh crap, we weren't ready to go here. Alright, we'll do this and then we'll come back up afterwards. There was still more to explore up there, that's all. This is the fridge, right? Oh wait, what else is there? Why was that lady so scared? Wall collapse, it's inaccessible now. What is this thing? Central furnace, a thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, colouring it pitch black. Look inside the furnace? It's dark and grimy here, in the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above, a voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chambers, upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks as he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I hear the murder of the hangman talking. Wait, really? He looks up at the ceiling. We should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Kim, what is this thing? A furnace? Looks like it. This mean old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peers inside. No one's used it in ages. No sign of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Smear your hands with coal. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into your wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. Maybe you could paint something with this coal. Leave a cave painting for future archaeologists. No, that'd be stupid. Still, it's good to have this dirt on you. Real men wear coal for makeup. Kick it with your foot. Hollow ring. Oh, crap. It goes out through the furnace. Your toe hurts. Well, that was clever. But I do do clever stuff. Often. As you've seen. An ice cream maker, defrosted and unplugged. What is this? Oh, there's heaps of stuff down here. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. And what do we got? Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone else is... Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Look, there's a hole in the wall. Shine light on the hidden compartment. Yes, there is, and there also appears to be something inside that hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Yes. Your hand reaches deep into the darkness and spiderwebs. Rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim. The lieutenant steps closer, curious. Are these any good? Inspect. Most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bold action model with a fine wooden stock. In better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. An old Belle Margrave from the Revolution. The lieutenant notes with approval. His eyes are gleaming. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles, he points up at the rifles under the ceiling. 
Must be an old weapons cache. We got a rifle. It doesn't work, but we got a rifle anyway. We could at least threaten people with it, you know? It might not work, but we can threaten people with it. A frozen ice cream maker still running? Still running? I thought there was no power. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads off in the darkness and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Hmm. Rip the red one out. Look how giant and red and inviting it is. Okay. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Plug the black cable? Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Um... I don't know, I just unplugged it. I do things without any reason. Lieutenant raises his brow but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has a cable missing. And plug the black cable back in. Okay. Uh, what else we got? That's a staircase. So there's another... Oh my god, there's so many ways out. Intercom rise, run to the breaker box. Alright, let's go check out this fridge then. And then we need to wrap it up. But we still got a lot to explore here. A whole lot. You see a, the looming shadow of an ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is slightly open. Its eyes are dead, but it's still terrifying. Run before it wakes up. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? Crack open the door. A faint waft of cool air rolls out. You hear the sound of dripping water. This is the inside of a defrosting refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revishol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. This is clearly the fridge. It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it's more than big enough and cold enough. Honestly, it's perfect. All we have to do is plug the fridge back in. Oh, my bad. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers? A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. Looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. What's an abandoned bear-shaped fridge doing an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. Looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He tries to study it in the darkness. Somewhere in the past, it's summer. Five-year-old Fifette lets go of her mother's hand. Change jingling in her pockets as she hops towards the ice cream stand right across the plaza. Shake from the sudden cold sensation. As she makes her way to the market, stalled, the girl starts crying. A ferocious ice bear is, sta is guarding the fridge. Its paws are raised to ward off any potential customers. <laughs> her mother rushes to see there, but Fifette doesn't want ice cream anymore. She just wants to go home. The ice bear stares at them as they leave the plaza. A gust of wind flies one of the wrappers right past the sobbing girl. So they tried to sell ice cream from this <laughs> hyper carnival? I know, says the lieutenant. What an unfortunate marketing choice. At least it's not running them a loss anymore. Now that you've unplugged the cable, puts the red snaky cable running from the fridge. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets, keeping... Okay. Let's go plug it in again, I guess. I thought I plugged in the right one again, but I guess not. Okay, there's more upstairs we need to check out as well, still, and whatever's up there. And whatever's in there. Unplug the black cable. Hang on, there's something here. I didn't see that. Ooh, plus one drama. A tank top, which I'm already wearing a tank top, but that one looks slightly less gross. So that's cool. <laughs> the fridge is plugged in now. Will you help me with the body cam? Of course, I'll take the head. Head, you take the feet. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but we'll manage. The two of you? Easily. Let's do this. Body is heavier than you expected. And stinkier. Takes half an hour to get it down the basement. And ten more minutes to stuff it in the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your hand. Beautiful, he says, wiping his hands in his handkerchief. Dead body on a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best police work I've ever done. <laughs> You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rights. Really? You think it's good work? No, not really. Look at that. What have we done? We've stuffed a dead body in an ice bear fridge. The story does not leave this room. We did our best with our means at our disposal. 
Did we though? He sighs. Okay, maybe we did. At least he stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another in inspection under controlled circumstances. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. The boots? I thought we decided to leave it to processing. I really want to take the boots off, man. <laughs> Far out. Okay, we're okay. You touch the dead man's body. His skin is cold, light blue, and silvery in the light of the fridge. You still have no idea where to begin. What to even do with him? The lieutenant rugs his side for warmth. I'll come to you sooner or later. At least he'll be safe there until then. Okay. And we're going to wrap this episode up here because we're out of time, but we need to explore the rest of this area in the next one. And we are running very low on morale and health. I'm going to boost our morale there. We'll manage. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.